If you go to high-end tempura restaurants in Japan, they do each individual piece, they fry it, they serve it to you, you eat it. So you're getting it at the peak moment, the temperature and the crispiness. That's good. <laughs> Hi, my name is Takahiro Sagaira. I am a chef partner at Naminori, a Japanese temaki bar in the West Village. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to make tempura. First thing we're gonna do is uh, make the sauces. Dealing with tempura, the batter is the last thing that we wanna do. So we wanna set up everything, get our mise en place put in place. Then the last thing we do is make the batter and fry everything. Today, I'm gonna to make two different sauces. One's a little, you know, classic tempura dipping sauce. Other one is a little bit more contemporary, a yuzu soy that we serve in our restaurant at Naminori. We're gonna go very simple way today. So hondashi and water. And all we're gonna do here is just heat this up to get all the hondashi melted. All right, so three parts of this dashi and then one part soy sauce. And to garnish this, we're gonna grate some daikon to add a little bit texture and some more flavor. What we wanna do here is after we grate this all, we wanna put this through kind of like just a strainer just to get rid of any of the excess liquid. And ginger is very strong flavor, so it doesn't take much. And I'm gonna put together the other sauce here. I have a uh, soy sauce here fish sauce, some yuzu juice. So yuzu is a type of Japanese citrus. They do grow in uh, warmer climates, so in California, you might be able to find it. You know, it's kind of in the orange family. And then we're gonna add a little bit of meat into this and just a little bit of sugar as well. And then after that, we're just gonna bring this to a boil and slurry it just to get it some consistency. Just starch and water, you're gonna slowly drizzle it in. You wanna make sure that it comes back to a boil before you add more, because uh, it might just turn into glue on you. You don't want that. Fantastic. Along with the other dipping sauces, what's great with tempura is I think it's really about highlighting the, the vegetable. And the best way to do that is just with salt. Today I'm just gonna have some of this leftover nori. I'm gonna pulverize this and create some nori salt. <laughs> Sounds like it's crying. <laughs> dehydrated yuzu skin that's turned into a powder. Same thing here, just mixing this with a little bit of salt, kind of a flavored seasoning, yeah. I would say almost any vegetable you can tempura. You don't want it to have too much water. Tomatoes and cucumbers, it sounds kind of a little weird in my head. It's not gonna get crisp, right? So just in terms of how we cut, you know, these potatoes, if you make it thicker than this, it's gonna take too long for it to cook and your batter will end up kind of burning on the outside. But then again, if you make it too thin, you're gonna end up just tasting batter. So asparagus is pretty simple too. You know, if we go this way, we can just go simply like this, or we can uh, kind of put some incisions in here to fan this out. Just creates a little bit of visual aesthetic here. Shiitake too, this is very simple. All we're gonna do is just take these stems off. This is just shiso leaf. Squash blossoms, obviously beautiful right now. These are looking great. All we're gonna do for these, is we're just gonna cut these in half. So two different types of nasu here. This is a, your Italian varietal. This is like a Japanese varietal. Just taking the head off of here and split this in half. And uh, nasu actually has a lot of water too, a lot of moisture inside. So you might see this pretty often where they put these slits in here and they fan these out. This also allows for the uh, oil to contact and kind of get rid of the water a little bit faster. Onions. If we skewer it, we can actually create layers of this and separate the layers. We'll see how that turns out later. <laughs> a simple way to do carrots, obviously we can just cut them into kind of batons, but uh, we're gonna do the kakiage style here with the onions since we have both. Julian carrots. <laughs> I love cooking all my life. I actually started because I just loved eating, right? Um, and you know, growing up, kind of traditional Asian family. My mom was a housewife and she was always making dinner for us, home cooked meals every day. And so just in a rush to eat faster, I always go into the kitchen and, hey mom, can I help? You know, I wasn't being nice. I, I just was, I was just was hungry, I wanted to eat. But you know, I, I loved it. That feeling of like someone caring for you and making you food and like having that feeling, I want to give that to people too. Corn here, couple ways of doing this too like right at the edge of this, if you can cut it right at the right spot, where you're cutting a little bit of the core, it'll stick together, but you can see that it's very difficult because you end up with a lot of waste. But this piece right here, it looks like it's, it's attached here, but when you fry it, it's like, it's still soft. You don't really feel any of it. I think the easier way is to just remove the kernels and then essentially to make a corn fritter. Okay, so now that we have all the veg prepped out, we're gonna now move on to the proteins. You know, this squid is already kind of cleaned. I'm gonna just cut this one open here just to expose the center and just make sure that it's dry and clean in the center as well. You can always do the rings. When we think about tempura, most common protein is, is shrimp. Obviously, you wanna de-vein it, remove the vein, 
And then on the bottom here, I guess I call this the belly. So on the belly side, just making some small incisions here and then flipping it back onto the belly side and just gently pressing it just to kind of break the joints so that we end up with like a straight uh, piece of shrimp here. There's generally water inside the tail, so you'll always see people talking about cutting the tail and removing the excess water from there. Otherwise, you might end up with uh, like an explosion from the tail and might just explode on you, so. Whenever dealing with proteins, I always like to season the protein directly, but just very, very lightly. Uh, this will help to kind of draw out a little bit extra moisture as well. Those shrimps are pretty dry. These squids, I'm gonna give them a good press. All right, and then now we're gonna make the batter and fry these up. Oil, we want to set this temperature at 335. With frying tempura or frying anything in general, temperature control is really important. If we drop down to certain levels, that's when all the oil and like goes into the batter and gets soggy. So we really don't want to ever come below like 325. If you see your oil below there, you might have some soggy situation going on. So now that everything is ready, we finally want to get into the last stage of making the batter. If you want to make your own batter, uh, essentially it's, you're looking for a low gluten wheat flour. This particular one, we have a pre-mixed one. Other important factors, cold, cold water. So we got ice, ice water here. Cold water actually helps for it to not mix with the flour. Another thing about mixing the batter, you may have seen other batters or other things where they use a whisk and they go crazy on it. It. I would say tempera batter, it's pretty traditional. It's okay to have some lumps in it. It's a good sign that you haven't overmixed it. But easy way is just to kind of test it. You can put into oil, test the temperature of oil that way too. Wet things don't stick to wet, dry things don't stick to dry. So uh, generally, if there's any kind of moisture on the outside, we want to dredge it. This is just regular AP flour here, just using to remove any moisture. Right now, the batter is looking pretty good to me. Now we're ready to tempura. So uh, one thing you do want to have is a, what do you, a spider or some sort of sieve. Uh, any of this excess tempura flakes you want to remove. Obviously sitting in here for too long, it'll burn. The thing I'm focusing on here while I'm watching this is kind of the bubbles. The bubbles is the, obviously the moisture content in the actual vegetable itself. When we first put it in, we're going to see bigger bubbles. And as this is continuing to cook, the bubbles will get smaller and smaller. And after that, looking for actual color of the batter. You know, I like to use chopsticks personally because I can actually feel the crispiness of the batter as well. Sometimes you use a little bit bigger tools like tongs, it's hard to get the sensation. And when you lift this up, you can actually feel the water vibrating and boiling inside. In the beginning, it should be vibrating, but if it's not vibrating at all, it means it's probably overcooked because there's no more water left. Once we take this out of the oil, we want to season uh, just very, very gently right away. While it's still hot and the oil is there, the salt will kind of adhere to the oil. If you kind of wait till it's all cold, it's just going to fall off. If you go to high-end tempura restaurants in Japan, right, it's like, the omakase style where they do each individual piece, they fry it, they serve it to you, you eat it. And I was thinking about like at home, maybe it's too dangerous because it's like 335 degree oil. <laughs> maybe not a good idea. Generally like the skin side of the eggplant, you want to wipe it off so that you can kind of expose the purple color. It's just fanning it out with my hands and holding it there for a second and then letting it go. Very, very strange story. Like, honestly, I, I thought all my life tempura is like purely Japanese, it's a Japanese creation, but the, the history behind it was that uh, it's actually uh, Portuguese in origin. It was brought over into Japan, and that's when Japan kind of took it over and, you know, obviously created their own version. The actual name is a Latin name, even though in the Japanese language, when you write things, Generally, if it's a foreign word, you use a different set of characters to signify that it's different. And so it was just very deceiving to me when I found out the history of tempura to find out that it's not Japanese at all. Even the name is, is Latin from tempura, it's like uh, signifying the time in which they were fasting from eating any meat. And so when you see tempura, you never really see meat. It's only vegetables and seafood. So this is it. Ta! <laughs> This is all the hard work we put in today. This tempura here, tempura mori awase. We got our corn fritters, shiitake, our eggplants, shiso leaves, our squash blossoms, our onions, and our kakiage back here, shrimp and squid, uh, and our sweet potatoes in the back. So we got here yuzu salt, some nori salt. We have our yuzu soy, and this is our daikon oroshi and ginger here. This is our tempura tsuyu. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a kind of classic guy, you know, I like the traditional sauce here, so. 
So what we're really looking for, tempura, really looking for light, crisp batter. You use the salt here and the squash blossoms. And obviously the sound is important, right? You want to hear that crunch. It's good. <laughs> so for anything that we've done here today, if you were looking for a recipe, just click the link down below. And uh, if you're ever in New York in the West Village area, come see me. I'm usually there at Naminoya Restaurant. Please, thank you.